Too many cyclists are buying the wrong bike. What they actually need is one of these, an endurance bike, a bike designed to maximize comfort without sacrificing performance and speed. Because most cyclists, like you and I, like riding bikes for fitness and for fun, and maybe bag a few PBs along the way. We're not too worried about marginal gains and squeezing out every last possible watt. And that's why endurance bikes are the perfect bike for most of us. And in this video, I'm going to give you seven reasons why I think that is the case. And we'll start with comfort. Because comfort will help you ride faster for longer. Increasing comfort is going to offer bigger rewards than a lighter and more aero frame. Unlike road race bikes, which have a very aggressive geometry, very low and stretch to put you in that ideal aero position for road racing, endurance bikes are optimized to give you more comfort for long rides. They achieve this through the geometry. So the handlebars are higher and closer to your body via a taller head tube and a shorter top tube to put you in a more upright and a more relaxed position. If you're not a professional cyclist and riding 30 hours a week and just doing a few social rides at the weekend, you'd be much better off with a relaxed fit and geometry of an endurance bike. As well as big tires, one of the key features of an endurance bike is a frame designed to offer more compliance and more comfort. And there are many different ways manufacturers achieve this extra comfort over a road race bike which is designed to be as rigid and stiff as possible. It can be as simple as the shaping of the tubes in key areas of the frame and a fork designed to allow more compliance. And in the case of carbon fiber, which we have here, the actual layer of the carbon fiber tuned to offer even more comfort. Some manufacturers go even further. In the example of this Villiers Gran Turismo SLR, we had this very novel suspension at the back here. The seat stays are actually separated from the seat tube here, designed to offer around five millimeters of rear suspension travel. And that, with the big tires, provides a lot more comfort at the saddle. And that not only makes an obvious difference to the comfort you experience on a long ride, but also your happiness on those long rides as well. Because you have a smooth ride and it's less jarring, you can keep riding for longer than you would on a road race bike. And some manufacturers go even further. Specialized, for example, with a spring underneath the stem, while some bike brands offer actual suspension, either on the seat post or the stem. So you want even more comfort, there are different solutions out there for you. The advent of disc brakes over the last few years has really enabled this massively increased tire clearance. And the benefit of wide tires at lower pressures makes a massive difference to how much comfort and smoothness a bike like this can offer. And don't think fat tires at low pressures are slow. There are studies out there that show they're just as fast and sometimes even faster in terms of rolling resistance than narrow tires. So the old days of running 23 or 25 mil wide tires and thinking that's good are long over. Okay for road racing, but for us regular cyclists, riding at regular speeds, fat tires are where it's at. And more than just comfort, are the other benefits too, namely traction and control and confidence they offer, and the ability to, when the road runs out, tackle some light gravel and dirt roads as well. And if you go tubeless, which I'm a real fan of, you can minimize the risk of punctures almost entirely. And trust me here, once you try fat tires at low pressures, you'll never go back to narrow tires ever again. I've been riding 28s and 30s for the last few years, and I can't see any reason why I would go back to a narrow tire, like I used to run 10 years ago when 23 was considered a wide tire. So fat tires for the win. The geometry of an endurance road bike, as previously mentioned, is a big difference to road race bikes. And while the obvious benefit is that higher and more relaxed fit on the bike, the other benefit is also the stability and calmness of handling. Usually we have a longer wheelbase and a slacker head angle, and it gives a bike that's way easier and way calmer to ride in all situations at any speed, especially if you're dealing with rough road surfaces 
or parlay. And when you're riding for fitness and fun, and maybe pushing your limits on those longer rides as well, a bike that's easy to handle and isn't twitchy and nervous like a road race bike will make your cycling experience much better. Another reason that endurance bikes are so good is that they offer you better gears for real world use. Road race bikes are designed for high speed action. So you have a big chain set at the front and a very small cassette on the back. And that's great if you're road racing and you are super fit. But if like me, you ride for fitness and fun and you encounter lots of very steep hills, those gears can be too much. So endurance bikes have a smaller compact chain set and a bigger cassette. 1134, 1136 in some cases. And those bigger gears make it much easier to get up the hills with the level of fitness most of us actually have. And while it's easy to obsess around that high end, high speed action, having gears that allow you to actually get up the hills without walking, is a bigger benefit for more of us. And that's why when I did a Fred Witten challenge last year, which is coming up very soon, having low gears was a focus for me. So unless you're a pro, then go for an endurance bike with the low gears and it'll look after you much better than the aero gains of that road race frame. And don't assume that endurance bikes are slow. They are definitely not. While comfort is a clear focus of bikes like this, it's not at the expense of performance and speed. And you only have to go back about five or 10 years to remember that bikes like this were developed and raced in Paru Bay the toughest one day cobble classic in the world. And the gap between road race bikes and endurance bikes has definitely narrowed over the last few years. Take this Villiers Gran Turismo SLR as an example. We have a full carbon frame and fork sharing the same technology as a Falante SLR, their road race bike. We then have a one piece carbon fiber handlebar for low weight, full internal cable routing for a bit more aero and a D-shaped seat post for aero as well. So while it won't be as fast in the wind tunnel as that Falante SLR or as stiff or lightweight, it definitely doesn't give much away and it doesn't do that while compromising comfort, the main focus of this bike. And in my experience, they're definitely faster than a gravel bike, even with some slick tires fitted. Another reason that endurance bikes are so appealing is the extra versatility they offer over a road race bike. Those race bikes are designed for one job, going fast. These are designed for so much more. They can be used for everything from fast paced group rides, leisurely Sunday jaunts, commuting with mud guards because some have mud guard mounts, and some are even perfect for multi-day touring or bike packing adventures with pannier racks or bike packing bags added and some are increasingly offering more mounts for extra bottles and bags. That big influence on gravel bikes we're seeing on endurance bikes now. And that makes them much better for a wider range of uses than a road race bike. Probably not as versatile as a gravel bike perhaps, but for many road cyclists, it's probably more than enough. If all that sounds really interesting to you, but you still want bigger tire clearance and more versatility, and perhaps off-road ability, you might be better off with a gravel bike. And a gravel bike with slick tires can still operate really well as a road race bike. And you find out how by watching the video right up here. But that's all for today. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you again very soon.